This is Carlos EDC, and for those of me, those of you <laughs> who are watching the live after, I can't cut that out, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. Uh, for those of you watching the live after, uh, I review gear on YouTube, gear like um, this PM2 here. Uh, it's got custom scales and custom screws, custom clip, um, gear like a flashlight, and Sometimes I'll do random gear, like maybe a flask. I haven't reviewed a flask, though. Perhaps I should. Anywho. Today, I'm going to talk to the people who watch this channel live. And I'm going to explain how it is that I review the gear that I review. And this is super casual, like... I just got done walking my doggy, so just bear with me. But basically, the way I do a review is, obviously I pick a knife or a piece of gear that I personally like the aesthetics of and that I personally think would work well with my life and my lifestyle. Um, 27 years old, I was born in 92. I'm married and I'm a construction worker in Arizona. So Arizona laws, knife laws are... are are you know very flexible I guess you would say but so I don't have to worry about like length or if it's automatic or anything like that maybe that's something you have to think about in your part of the country or your part of the world I usually if I like it it's usually legal in Arizona so I just purchase it uh, the other factor is uh, usability and usually I buy a knife under $200 however that is going to change here pretty soon. I really like something uh, that's over that. I guess people in the community would call it your grail. Uh, so something. So that's my criteria of wh what type of gear I buy for review. Uh, I like its aesthetics, uh, usability, legal in my state. Uh, the next one would be obviously also the price. But the next one would be materials. Uh, I like materials that are gonna work well for my life and my lifestyle uh, for example I have a lot of S35 um, this PM2 is an S35 S35 VN is a, is a knife steel that was created uh, recently like maybe 10-15 years ago um, by Crucible Steels and what's it? Chris Reeve from Chris Reeve Knives and yeah it works well I mean all three knives that I just showed you are an S35 VN it holds its edge well uh, it sharpens up easy and it's pretty tough you know every now and then I'll hit a staple at work so toughness is, is rather important to me so materials also a handle I like I like strong handles and I like ergonomic handles so this is titanium and it's pretty ergonomic uh, same with the PM2 is ergonomic, but this uh, one is in carbon fiber, 12 carbon fiber, a little bit different. Uh, but I like G10. Even I'll even do FRN. I don't own an FRN knife currently, but I'll, I'll do it if I must. This is aluminum, but it's only two pieces and it's very well constructed. This is American made here in California, not here in California, but over there in California. Just a cool knife. So what I do once I get the knife that I like, uh, after the, it meets the criteria that I'm looking for, what I do is I get it in, I unbox it. Part of the unboxing is part of the experience of, of the knife. It's going great, Jade. How you doing? Uh, I'm just explaining how it is that my reviewing goes. Um, so after buying a knife that I like, basically, I take it with me to work. And whatever I need to do at work, I don't artificially test knives that much. I do if I feel like I didn't use it enough. But usually I just take that knife to work. The PM2, I've been taking it for, I don't know, so many days and so many weeks and months. Because when I'm not reviewing something, I'm usually carrying the PM2 or the Outlast. Outlast is a great, great knife for work as well. I don't know if I have a photo of it recently. But for example, this is a pocket dump from work. Uh, you know, two knives, not necessary, but as a knife enthusiast, that's kind of nice. Uh, a Sharpie and a pen, 
it's just very useful as a construction worker to take some notes or mark wood or uh, with a pen or or the, the sharpie for anything that I gotta do but basically I just take it to work and I open boxes cut boxes down open packages cut rope today I had to cut some really thick almost fire hose and yeah it and what I used was this uh, Kaiser Dukes no longer available so that's the other thing I'd like to review things that are available so like if a viewer likes it I like for the viewer to be able to buy it if he likes it he or she likes it uh, but I reviewed this thing anyway just because I thought it was fun and you can still buy the G10 version it's a bit smaller and a, a lot cheaper than this one so that's why I reviewed it so basically once I I feel like I used it enough on that review on on that week that work week once I feel like I used the knife enough and then I would take it on my review table, which is this table right here. Once it hits this table, I start talking about it just off the cuff. Uh, I don't write anything down. I, I don't write criteria down. But basically, usually if you watch my videos, I'll start with the blade, blade shape. Uh, makes sense. Good way to go about it. Yeah, like if I just use it and I use it a lot in my everyday as a construction worker. But if I do need testing, I will test it. I'll cut some paracord, I'll cut some boxes, and I'll add that footage to the review so that the watcher could watch it. Uh, hey, Luis, how you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm explaining um, the review process. Uh, so once I use it enough uh, and or test it, I, I, I call it testing it artificially because just taking it to work is testing it. But then going out of your way to cut things, that I feel like that's artificial. And I do do that if I must. But if I if I just use it a lot, I, I don't test it artificially. Once I do that, I start just shooting video. Uh, and I'll start with a blade. For example, this one, I would say something like, you know, the blade shape I like because it's a continuous curve, basically. And that's something I'd like. That's something I find useful. I talk about the belly, the tip. I talk about... If it's good to sharpen pencils, because that's something I do a lot. I talk about whether or not the finger choil is nice, or whether or not it has a finger, a thumb ramp. Just I go on about it almost, ana a a almost in its anatomy. So I'll talk about the handle next. Am I explaining the blade chip? Yes, I should explain the blade chip. I dropped it at work in concrete. We were talking, we we're having a meeting, like after work, and we were just standing. Uh, we could have gone inside, but we we're just standing out in the concrete and I was fidgeting with my knife in the construction working Like field. It's not weird for me to fidget with a knife uh, You know my buddies carry knives their buddies carry knives contractors carry knives uh, Nice ones too. So it's not weird if I fidget with it I was fidgeting with it and paying attention to the meeting and it fell right off my hand. It hit the concrete, and yeah, the tip came off. Yeah, not an exciting story. I have to. I think it will sharpen out, but if not, I'll have it regrind, which is something I've been thinking about. But yeah, in my reviews, after I go about the blade, I will talk about the handles, handle just construction, ergonomics, etc. I will talk about the clip afterwards and after that i will talk about the the stuff that's not the anatomy of the knife so i'll talk about how it is made how it's constructed i will talk about how it fits in your pocket i will talk about how uh its overall aesthetics appeals to me or not and once i do that all the positives are done then i'll, I'll talk about the negatives and I will explain, like, that's nitpicking. I will explain that. But I also want to tell people the negatives in case... Because when I'm buying something, I want to know what I'm getting into. So I think that people would appreciate me getting into that nitty-gritty, that nitpicking part of it. Uh, for example, you know, this knife is ugly to me. The primary tool, primary Terry 2 is ugly uh, to me. But... It's extremely useful, so I'll say that. Uh, another nitpicky thing about the PM2 is the fact that you always have to buy a different clip, and that's an extra twenty dollars. 
a not so nitpicky thing is that it's expensive. This PM2 is $150 now for like just the vanilla version. This one's uh, S35 EN, so that would that would be a little bit more expensive. So you add 150 and you add the clip, that's $170 for just G10 and S30V. That's not cool. <laughs> Jade agrees with its ugliness. Uh, just uh, this one specifically is kind of cool. Uh, I guess I'm biased because I own it. Also, another thing I would explain my bias because uh, you try and do it objectively, but you can't. So you got to explain that. So I let everybody know I like big knives and I like knives that can get work done. So that's my bias. That's what, like if if a knife is just nice looking, uh, <laughs> like it, it's probably for other people, but it's not for me. So I'll say that. Uh, and if a knife is like too small in hand, I'll say that. Uh, unless it's a knife that you specifically want to be for uh, its small size, like this one. This is my running knife. It's under two ounces. Um, I'm not gonna cut anything on my runs, but I still like to carry one. Um, and this is a very nice one. But basically, that's why I review my things. Uh, if I like it and I have money, I buy it. Once I buy it, I take it to work. Once I take it to work for a week or two, I'll, I'll review it on my table. I don't take notes. I take a lot of footage and then I cut it down and compress it. Uh, I take about two hours, um, one or two hours editing things uh, for review, which is a really long time, but I, it's part of the hobby. It's part of my hobby. And yeah, I like doing that. Um, I like these lives, they're they're a bit more fun, but at the same time, they're not that fun. Because like I'm just ranting, and I have to come up with a topic. Sometimes people show up and ask questions. Sometimes people show up and, and just kind of watch. Uh, I think um, this has been the less viewers I've ever had. But, but it's still cool though because I have Jade here and I have Luis, two of just my favorite uh, viewers really. Uh, you guys are always taking badass photos on Instagram. Recently I featured Luis on my pocket dump uh, video. Uh, it was a super cool one. I don't know if you watched that video yet, Luis. If you have, let me know. Because uh, uh, yours was like one of the coolest pocket dumps I, I have featured. Um I added a clip there that, that was kind of funny, I thought. But, I mean, yeah. That's how I review my knives. I've done over 100 videos. Well over 100 videos. Have you done a collab live? A, you're awesome. <laughs> I haven't yet. I need to do my research on it still. I've been, I've been kind of, you know, busy lately. I did this thing on my last live... I wore one before that one that I was gonna try and run every day for 30 days and make a like a little movie about it and I'm currently doing that in fact after this live I'm gonna go on a run uh, yesterday I ran 5k in 30 37 minutes so yeah it's a little bit over three miles so like 10 minutes a mile or something like that but uh yeah, I think the movie's going to be cool, and this part of the hobby as well. It's like, I don't just want to make knife videos. I want to do a little bit of live style stuff, too, so people know who I am in order to understand where I'm coming from when I review a piece of gear. Otherwise, you know, you don't know what that guy does or anything like that. It's kind of weird. That's why I say I'm a construction worker, so, like, then you know where I'm coming from. Like, I'm going to open concrete bags, and sometimes I'm going to cut some sheetrock, you know? But I'll do a collab soon enough. I want to get Jade on here. Uh, Alex from Alex Knives. I want to get Brad from Mild Manor DC. I want to get Sack. Sack and I talk a lot. Uh, it'd be great to have, a, like, a live conversation. Uh, Big Red. Uh, just just have fun not really like an interview just have fun and talk about just general stuff are you still doing that 30 day running challenge yeah I'm on day like 23 
Like I said yesterday, I ran a 5K. Today, I'm probably just doing like a mile. The movie's coming out really cool. I think I have a lot of... Arizona is super nice. So, I know Jade disagrees with me. Uh, <laughs> but Arizona is super nice. I've been getting some cool footage of different parks and different lakes and different like canal runs. and I've been going out of my way to have like fun runs. And when it's just the monotonous run around my neighborhood, I, I just screenshot my time and distance, and I add that to the video. Otherwise, it's gonna be super long. But yeah, I'm I'm aiming for that video to be like 10 to 15 minutes long, and I'm aiming for it to be like epic, like hours of editing and, and just explaining the story of why and how and and like the conclusion. Uh, I started weighing 200 and like almost a one pound 201 pounds right now I'm 195 so six pounds I've lost in 20 something days and I've been eating a, like a pig still uh, like a construction worker basically uh, AC is awesome those desert sunsets are ridiculous they are they, they're freaking beautiful they really are it's not my fault <laughs> uh, no it's not your fault that Arizona is a desert but not all of Arizona is a desert just Phoenix and and a lot of the southern parts and Tucson, etc. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the method behind the madness. Uh, what gear do I use to review? This is just a cheap mic. I have a, a Manfrotto mini tripod. Um, I usually just use the light coming out of my window here uh, for my reviews. And I have a black surface uh, or a cutting board, board surface. And I have a mic stand holding the mic and when I do the reviews I just clip my phone to the mic stand and that's what I have for my uh, top down shots just literally a little clamp that comes out of my you guys can see it right here so this clamp right here is what I use and it's on a little mic stand and I just clip the phone and I start shooting what I used to edit is a really old uh, Macintosh Pro, MacBook Pro, like a, a 2008. So it's a 12 year old uh, MacBook Pro. And I use Filmora to edit that. And that's it. If you guys want to watch any reviews, and, and if you guys want to do your own reviews, that's how I do it. Well, it's the mic stand is $16. And the computer is just the computer. Man, you're great at reviewing. I get distracted with the random stuff I do. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is I wake up early on a Saturday. And once I wake up early on a Saturday, there's no movement. Uh, my to-do list is pretty short. Uh, shoot and edit a video, run, make breakfast for my wife. And just little things like that that I have to do, like little chores. Because uh, I have weekends off all the time. And yeah. That's all I got to do. On, uh, so it's, it's it's not very distracting. My puppy distracts me. So I wa got to walk my puppy. And, and just things like that. But I, I've been trying to get reviews. You know out pretty often. It's hard. Uh, because if I borrow. Um, gear for example. Then I have to send it back. And. Yeah, it's just expensive, I guess. I'm going to show... What am I going to show? My last run? Sure. No, let's not do that. But, yeah. It's not that hard. Uh, the last one I did was... Um, the Manix. And this one... Uh, your buddy sent it to me. So, like, I have people who always wants to send me gear. And, you know, sometimes I say yes. What's up, Carlos? Just got here. Hey, Benny. How you doing, brother? Uh, I was just talking about the the process of, of making a review. How exactly I make my reviews. I was pretty thorough about it. I even talked about, like, when and how. Um, I, I hope that helps somebody. If somebody's looking to start reviewing gear... Uh, that's how I do it. Like I, I told every single step. There was no secrets left. <laughs> <sighs> oh.
Okay. <laughs> Carlos is a pro. No, I wish. Uh, I'll get better at it. I'll get better gear. I'll get. I'll just get better. Better at it. Yeah. I'll just. I'll just get better. I mean, that, that's what I've been doing. It, it. It. I didn't start out. My last review was the Manix. I did that in a rush because I wanted to send it back. It was a barred knife, and it was an extremely nice knife. I appreciate Brad a lot. But I, I added some clips from like Jurassic Park and and I added like Dark Side, you know, because of the Omega Spring versus the coiled spring of the Manix. But basically, it was the same review I did. Carlos Intros are sick. Thanks, man. I appreciate that a lot. I really do. Uh, so that one, for example, was basically the same review as the lightweight. The only difference is it has liners. Which, I mean, it, they they probably make a difference, but I'm not out there batoning my knives every day. Uh, and I, I've seen the lightweight being baton, and it, it, it holds up well. So, yeah, I think if I did a lightweight versus the G10 version, if they used the same blade steel, I think I would go for the lightweight. And not because of the lightweight uh, difference, because it's not a big difference. I would go with the lightweight because of price. Uh, it, it's like, it's a lot cheaper, so, hey, Peter, how you doing, brother, it's always nice seeing a, a fellow reviewer out here, I was just talking about how I do my reviews, like, my, the method behind the madness, but basically, it's, if I like it and have the money, I buy it, and once it's in here, I take it to work, I'm a construction worker, for like a week or two, I just work with it. If I have to do artificial testing, then I do that and I add that to the video of the review. And then I just get it on this review table and I should, I review. I didn't like the feel of the lightweight. You didn't like the feel of the lightweight. Like the FRN or like the Ergos or like the construction. That's me too, for the most part. Yeah, what are you? And I was even telling them how I used to hold. So I have a from eBay. I bought a mic mic stand. This mic stand right here. It has a clip on it, so I just clip my phone to it, and and that's it. I clip my phone to it, and I shoot down. I also uh, have this mic here. I think this was forty dollars. I forget the brand, but I talk about it often. And I put my my mic on because I think it sounds a little bit better. And that's that's all I do. I just start shooting and I review a lot. I, I edit a lot because I talk a, I talk a lot about my thoughts on the knife and some don't make sense so I just cut them out. I do use my phone. That's all I, I use. Right now it's my phone on the selfie camera. I have a light over there and I have the light on on the room and that's it. I have an iPhone 11, not the Pro version, just the iPhone 11. Pretty wide camera, so I got to be really close to the knife, which helps because then I can see the screen as I'm doing the review, and not, that way I don't get out of frame. Because a lot of the times, you get out of frame. Uh, back in the day, when I had the iPhone 8 or 7 or whatever. Uh, but yeah, check out my new screws. They're blue, they kind of look blurple with this light. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's all I use. And then I use my MacBook Pro. It's an old one. It's like 12 years old. Um, and I use Filmora. And that's all I use. I, I I I try and add little funny things to keep people entertained. And when I say the bad, I add some dramatic tones to it. Lately, uh, I just try and keep people entertained because it's not just about the stats or the idea. Some people just watch them, like me, for example. I just watch it almost as uh, an entertainment type thing uh, I've been meaning to do like my top 10 top 5 reviewers and um, I think I'm gonna have to do that video I think I'm gonna I have to sit down and write it out and just shoot the video because uh, there's a lot of good reviewers out there that I don't even care about the gear I just watch them because I like the reviews it's just fun and like lives are fun because you get to hang out with people I'm gonna try and pull out another fun uh, video or something. So this is me camping. I was shooting a a Rugger 22 out in the desert, not out in the forest.
It might be loud because I'm shooting. I apologize if it's loud. Can't really control the volume, I don't think. But that's a Rugger uh, 22 with like custom handles. And we're just shooting a metal target. You just bought a new gun? Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to buy this Rugger right here. It, with those scales, it's just beautiful. Like, no recoil. It feels great. It just feels great in hand. I like the weight behind it. It's, it's a nice piece. I don't know if everybody who's into knives is into guns, but I don't mind them at all. I want to get the SIG 365 next. That sounds pretty fucking sick. Also, I try not to cuss on my videos, but I will cuss on my lives. Ruger? Ruger? <laughs> Peter. I want to let my doggy in. But yeah, I was out uh, working at this cabin up north and I got to shoot some guns and AR. I got to ride a quad around. I got to hike around and stuff like that. But it was still work, you know, you're still out there sweating. I don't know, can you see that right there? I poked my hand with the screw gun. I was holding something here and like it, I slipped. It was bad, but I had a lot of fun. I got the Springfield Armory 9-11 and 9mm. Oh my god, Jay, that's sick. Yeah, I don't have anything that fancy, honestly. Will I? Probably not. I, I, like, I, bare minimum. Like, I only have four knives, I think. Uh, and, like, three knives that I don't use but I have to own. One being a traditional Kaiser Guru because it was for my birthday. And... The OP now, because it's an OP now. Got to step away back in a bit. Sure, sure thing, Peter. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one, Benny. Uh, a lot of good ones. I was afraid. So I was like, you know, guns are like almost like a political topic, and some people don't like when you bring them up. It's kind of weird. That, that's the reason why I don't cuss on my reviews. I will cuss on the live, because uh, that's just me. But on reviews, I try not to do it, because it's not necessary uh, in order to review a knife, um, Hilltop, how you doing, man? Uh, I always see you on the lives for uh, Big Red, so it's it's cool having you here and having Peter here too. It's like, it's like you know, it's cool. It's like part of the community. You guys are stepping in. What's up? Come here. Bella says hi. She matches with my mic. That's what I did to my last puppy that kept barking on my lives, Bella. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? She wants attention. It was on a super good sell, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to afford it. What's up? What do you need? I'm gonna let you out. Puppy's being weird. She was inten She wants attention. You tried one, Benny? I've tried. I tried a 911 once at a at a gun store, a Scottsdale Gun Club here in Arizona. It was fun. She's acting weird. Anywho, not yet. Uh, you know, it's like the differences are so minuscule, but. When you, when you, when it's in hand and you feel it, it's, it's weird. It's kind of like describing handle materials. Like G10 versus micarta versus carbon fiber. Like it's like, versus FR, FRN. Like you can, you know when you hold it, but it's kind of hard to explain on a review. <laughs> but what I've seen, yeah, I mean 911s are cool. I hear they're like hard to maintain, but I don't know much about that to be honest. And I also shot my buddy's AR. I was terrible at uh, shooting with an AR. I don't. I don't own one. I don't practice with one. It's just kind of there. Let's see. Maybe this video. La 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 la. 
Uh, I'm so again. I'm sorry if this is loud. I can't even like check the audio, so I just see the video. But it's my buddy's AR. It has scope on it. Pretty sick. Well, I messed up my. Okay, I'm gonna take that off. I don't know what I did here. There it is. Sorry. <laughs> Just spray and spray with an AR. <laughs> I wasn't. I was really trying to aim. Uh, I was really trying to hit the targets. Just spray and spray with an AR. Uh, yeah, I was really trying to hit the targets. Uh, it's it's also with the, with the River 22. I was just trying to hit it, hit the metal targets. I only get four out of ten, but it was pretty pretty far. I think like 20, maybe 25, 30 yards. And it was my first time shooting that gun. And I think I shot two clips off of that. That was kind of fun. And plus, I was in 7,200 feet of altitude, and it was the second day. So I was freaking a little bit dizzy. But oh well, I know in the beginning the 365 had some bugs, but from what I have seen, they've worked out bugs out. That's cool. Yeah, I gotta do my research. I think I, I need something else. I need something fun like that one, cause it was so fun, so fun. Uh, but yeah, let's get back to knives. Uh, I really want to get that SMG. I know there's a, another drop. Uh, of, of Protex Striders SNG with the Tritium blacked out. Somebody actually watched one of my lives and offered me uh, to sell one, but then I also knew that they were dropping new ones, so I was like, I think I'm just gonna wait for a new one. Uh, so yeah, and I also want the Chief that hasn't dropped. So my problem lately has been there, what I want and what's out there are not aligning. Uh, so I haven't reviewed anything. Um, I may or may not review the DECA. Um, a buddy um, would let me borrow it if I want to. Um, which is nice. But I don't know. Shooting is so fun. Too bad it's so expensive though. I, I, um, I guess it depends. Man, those SNGs are one of my girls. Uh, yeah, 275 it's kind of up there. And that's what I was talking about earlier about price. Like you have I have to agree with the price, you know. Usually it's under $200. I it just uh, it depends on states and it depends on on budgets too. Uh I think it's I think it's expensive too kind of. Uh especially if you have a lot of fun. <laughs> Won it at a raffle at a Ducks Unlimited event. That's cool. But, yeah. So, I might get something borrowed in so I can keep reviewing stuff. Because the channel is more about reviews. My pocket dump videos get more views than my reviews. But I still think that to je legitimize the channel, legitimize um, the content, I, I still feel like I need to keep reviewing new stuff so that... That I keep up with like modern knife. I don't know. I, I feel like if you're a knife channel, you need to review knives. But I don't know. Where am I from? I'm an Arizonian. Um, here in Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona, in fact. I talked about it earlier too. How uh, I don't have to worry about knife loss that much. If I like a knife, it's usually legal here in Arizona. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can EDC a fully automatic machete i'm pretty sure i can edc a fully automatic shotgun machete axe here in arizona probably i don't know maybe not fully automatic <laughs> but yeah if it exists you can edc it here in arizona uh oh yeah i got a garmin so garmin watches are usually pretty expensive this one was on sale recently for two hundred dollars, and uh, so it looks a bit, little bit like a G-Shock, and but it it has a heart rate monitor, GPS. It's an ABC watch, so out out and about in the forest, I was able to just track 
where camp was, etc. Track it down. I was able to figure out the altitude. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. This is what I've been using for my runs. And yeah, it's only 200 bucks. And it's not like super smart, but I don't want a smart watch. And for $200, it does what I need it to do. And it's apparently super rugged. And it kind of looks like a G-Shock. So it's like, you know, un like it, it goes under the radar. I changed the strap right away. This strap is for my glycine, glycine watch. I don't know if you can see that brand right there. But the glycine watch is like an automatic uh, watch. And this strap is actually almost worth as much as the watch. The strap is 150 bucks. It's natural rubber. It smells like vanilla. Super thick. But yeah, I took it off my fancy watch and I put it on this one right away. It's hard for me. Oh, Chabas told me to get into watches. Don't. My Glycine watch was $700 when I got it. Like, I could have a full collection of knives for $700. And all it is, it's, it's, it's using space in my drawer right now. Because I'm just wearing this. And I just took the strap off of it. So I can't even wear the nice, nice strap with it. I have an old ass garment. They're nice. They've been around for a long time. Super reliable. Uh, you know, atomic time all, time all the time. This one tells me the weather right now, my heartbeat, the date, battery. This battery lasts about a week before I have to charge it. So a week is really cool. The other thing I don't like about smartwatches is you have to charge it every day or every other day. And that's... I, I don't want to be plugged in. I want to use my stuff, you know. Yeah, I love watches too, but I can't afford nice stuff either. My my daily, if I was freaking rich, would be like a solid gold Rolex. Just a solid gold, uh, f you know, Rolex. No, I'm not even joking or kidding. I would, that That's the dream. That's the dream. If I can win the lottery and EDC that, I'd be super happy. Uh, that's dope, Carlos. That thing lost me too. Yeah, just a solid gold Submariner. Yellow gold. I'm Mexican. I can pull it off. I'm pretty brown, so yellow looks good on me. Just solid yellow gold blue or green dial Submariner. That's where it's at. Just to say I have it and it's all gold. <laughs> no, I would wear it. I would EDC it. I would build houses with a solid gold Rolex. I saw a contractor once, in fact, uh, RC. I could say his name, but no, I'm not gonna. He has a two-tone uh, Rolex, so it's half steel, half gold Rolex, and he frames houses. Like he will frame a house and not take his watch off. He will ski, no, water ski, like foot ski. He doesn't use a ski. He just uses his foot on the water. And he doesn't take his submarine off for that. Like he just, he's a crazy guy. He's in his 60s and he's like really good shape. He's the kind of guy you want to be in your 60s. Super good shape, out there having fun, super healthy, into fitness, and just wear some Rolex around with a hammer in his hand. That's a man's man. Get ya a gold tooth to match. I would, man. I would. I get an AP, yeah. Automas Piguet. Yeah, AP Royal Oak, that wouldn't be my daily. That would be like, you know, I'm trying to show off, okay? <laughs> that AP to show off, and then a Patek Philippe, uh, just a regular Patek Philippe, just time for like dinners with the wife, you know? That three piece, three piece collection, I don't want too much. Solid gold Rolex, solid gold AP, uh, Royal Oak, obviously, and, and, and a Patek. Maybe a Nautilus. And steel, in case I want to do something fun. The thing is, Rolex was built to be a worker watch. Uh, yeah, I mean that it's it's solid. He hasn't had any problems that I know of. Uh, he, he's a super cool guy. That's the kind of guy you want to be when you're old. Just a badass guy, healthy, wealth of gold Rolex. I mean, it's two tone Rolex, but still pretty expensive. It's probably twelve, fifteen thousand. Oof, high end worker watch. Me to all those watches, bro. Carlos, life is <laughs> life in watches. <laughs> What's up? I love knives. We're talking watches, apparently. I started with my cheap Garmin, and we went straight to Patek Philippe and Automas Piguet's. I don't know how. 
So this isn't even, does this even count as a watch? I mean, it tells the time, but yeah. It's nice to know, like, the weather outside before going on a run. And, you know, then it tracks your run. It's kind of cool. But, yeah, we've been talking about reviews and watches. And we've been here for 40 minutes. I think that's pretty good. My old boss had a Rolex, too. Yeah, he, he wasn't my boss. He was a contractor that worked for us. Not for us, with us. They would partner up and like, bigger projects. And his son was pretty cool. Like, he has great family like that's the kind of guy you want to be when you're old man you just want to have money and, and be good with your family and still be fit enough to frame a house like that's that's goals man that's goals uh yeah my boss boss wears a what's that marathon he wears a marathon it's a military watch looking thing with a bezel and has tritium inside so it's not lumen, it's tritium tubes inside. It's pretty cool. I think it's a 36 millimeter one. And he has a rubber, uh, natural rubber strap on it as well. Uh, yeah. And he, he carries a Gent for mass drop, S35VN, black G10 scales, and an O-Lite. And a Hinder investigator pen. That's his EDC. It's pretty cool. I'd like to take a picture of it someday. Um... That's the only guy. Uh, my mentor wears a Breitling. He let me wear it one day. Let's see if I can find the freaking picture real quick. I was wearing a suit that day. And he's like, hey, you would look good with this. And I was like, let me see. Let me try it on. Then I was like, babe, take a picture of me real quick. I might not be able to find it. It's been a while. Here it is. So I forget what the not, not what the Breitling this is. I'm sure one of you guys knows. Ask him. <laughs> I I don't think it means you could keep it. Uh, I forget what kind of Breitling it is though. Does anybody know? It's a chronograph type Breitling. I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, it's got a date on it. It's a GMT chronograph with a date. And it has a a mesh strap on it. I feel guilty carrying old lights these days with a pro American made sentiment during this time. Uh, yeah, I think this one is also made in China. There's a True Night Neutron 2C. I know Streamlight's made here. Uh, I don't know how uh, expensive Streamlight is. Oh shit, I can't get rid of this. So, okay, I'm going to talk about it real quick. I prefer American. I do. Like, I do. But, I'm not 100% against buying from somewhere else, you know? Like, China does a lot of good things. Like, even, you know, even for America. Like, we're pretty tight you know like probably not right now but mostly business wise we they depend on us and we depend on them and it and it's not just about like the gear in your pocket uh for example like what what phone are you gonna carry like it's an iphone it's made in china like you know so like i i prefer it i prefer it i feel more proud about it if i buy american but sometimes you got to bend the knee, I guess, and, and, and you're going to have to buy Chinese. You know, and, but yeah, for mostly, if I can buy it here and have it made here, I, I, that's what I do. I prefer it, prefer it coming from here. You know, I, I love this country, man. I, I jumped the border to get here. <laughs> I've got a Streamlight stylus. That's cool, Benny. Yeah, Streamlights are affordable. Me neither. China has good products, but more trash in quality. iPhone good, for example. I'm making it a point to support American-made American. I do the same. I I like American. I like Protec. You know, my next two knives that I really want are, are American. And I just feel better about it. I, I, I work here. 
I'm a manual labor guy here in, 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 in the United States, you know, and so I like supporting other people who are sweating and, 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 and using their hands to make something here. I, I, I support that. You know, a fellow American is probably driving to work just like me and making the knife that I'm going to use to work here. You know, and this is it's a bit romanticized. It's a bit romantic. It's a bit nice. But, you know, it's not uh, 100% must for me. Uh, right now, I don't have any uh, Chinese knives on my hit list. I don't. It's not on them. It's on it's on just the fact that I prefer American. Haha, uh, CRKT. Uh, here's the thing, Circuity builds nothing here, but it's an American company. Kersha, it's a balance for sure. Haha, <laughs> Circuity. So where do we draw the line? True, where do we draw the line? I draw the line where, like, if I have a choice, I buy it here. And if I, if like cho if the choice is blurry, like, I'm just going to choose. Like, this can, for example, I'm pretty sure it's made in China, but I don't, I... I didn't do my research to buy American. I got it for ten dollars at Costco. Like, I didn't think about it that much. <laughs> and sometimes you didn't even have a choice. Like, if you buy a mouse like this, this is gonna be made in China. I bet. It's like it's a really good freaking mouse too. It's a, a low lo, logi. There's a Max. This is really good for editing. Really ergonomic. It's just a really nice, but. If it has electronics in it, it's probably Chinese. You know, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta let it happen. You know, like for an iPhone, for example. Like, you know, it's a it's an American company and American design. It feeds Americans too, but it just they're made in China. Hilltop, uh, Yeti is three times the price. Of that can. Yeah, I have some Yeti stuff. I'm probably getting more Yeti stuff soon. Everyone's line is different. I, I saw you as long as you're happy with the stuff you own, then you're fine. I'm pretty happy, man. I agree, Hilltop. Hilltop, I agree. Something is hard to control. Yeah, some. Yeah, if it, I'm not going to stress that much about it. That's my point. But if I can buy American, I will buy American. Yeah, most of my knives are American. Except for two Kaisers. But, I mean, you know, if if, if Americans keep stepping up and keep making great shit, then I'm going to keep buying more American stuff. You know? Mordax, that's American. That's on my hit list. And Decca. Deca's American, that's on my hit list. So pretty soon, uh, all my collection is going to be fully American. But again, I'm not that hardcore. A lot of people are just uh, are, are totally hardcore. And that's fine. If that's your point you want to make, awesome. Just like, you know, if somebody's not doing that, don't shame them for it. Maybe that's all they can afford. Maybe that's, that's all they can do right now. Maybe they got that knife from a brother or a sister. Maybe they got that knife on a good sale. Maybe they got that piece of gear from a homie or a present. Or, or maybe they just don't have that strong of an opinion. And you don't have to shame them for it. I, I try and be nice. And, and, and I try and, and understand other people. And that's all, all we can really do as a community is try and understand one another. We have the thing that joins us is gear, mostly knives. And I think that's cool. American Cars too. I drive a Ford. Uh, but and I drive a Nissan Xterra, but I'm pretty sure Nissan makes their not, their cars here. So how does that work? If you buy a Japanese car made here, is that good? I don't know. My Toyota in 2000, my Chevy Avio didn't make 70. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Toyotas are made here too. I'll have to Google that. But a lot of Japanese cars are made here. Kia makes their cars here. Their Korean company. Um, 
I know Dodge used to make cars in Mexico and Volkswagen used to make cars in Mexico, but I don't know if that's the case anymore. So yeah, where do you draw the line? I say I don't stress about it, but I do prefer American. Kia's killing it right now. Dude, they make great stuff. And they're looking nice, man. They used to look a little off, but they, they're, they're starting to look nice. True, my Honda is made in Tennessee, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Tennessee. Um, I'd have to Google it. My Toyota is more American made than my wife's Ford. <laughs> is that true, Hilltop? That's funny, dude. But yeah, we got into those those ropes. And um, I'm glad I talked about it. And I'm glad it was on a live. And I'm glad it was on the last 10 minutes of an almost hour live. Like, I, I made my opinion. And I think I explained myself thoroughly. And I'm glad I, I, I talked about it. And it's out there now. I prefer American to 100%. Yeah, I mean, I prefer it. You know? I prefer Diet Coke, but I'll have a Coke Zero every now and then. <laughs> I'm a Diet Coke proponent kind of guy. But my wife likes Coke Zero. I don't know why. Also, water from a metal container or glass, but sometimes I'll drink in plastic. But anywho, I think we're going to call it a day. I appreciate you guys for coming in. I appreciate you guys taking the time. And spending it here. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And have a good night. Vanilla Coke. <laughs> no. Have a good evening gents. Great community here. Thank you. Thank you Olive Knives. Uh, hopefully you come in on the next one. I'm going to try and do it. Not every other Monday. At 8.30. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night guys.